Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, and that is we're going to be building a computer for video editing and rendering. <laughs> Okay, so first off, I want to share with you guys why I wanted to build this PC and why I chose the certain components I did. So firstly, why I wanted to build it is because of the YouTube videos that I make. Currently, I'm running a laptop with an i5 processor in it and using Adobe Premiere Home 13 Edition. And it is starting to really tax the laptop. Um, it doesn't have enough computing power, especially when you get into multiple clips and color correction. So I would like to move from the Premiere 13 up to the Premiere Cloud-based Edition. Also, I would like to do some more work in Blender. That little title logo uh, that you see in the beginning of most of my videos was made in Blender on that laptop, but it took a full day just to render that little 15 second clip. So I'd like to cut down on my Blender times um, for rendering. So let's talk about some of the components that I chose. Uh, we went with the Ryzen 3rd Gen 3900X. Uh, we splurged a little bit with this CPU uh, just because most of our computing power is going to be coming from this. So I especially didn't want to underpower our CPU. So that's why we went with the 3900X. Uh, and most of that is going to be based off of our video editing. Now for Blender, we wanted a decent GPU because we can utilize those CUDA cores. So I went with a GeForce RTX 2060 Super. Uh, we're going to be powering all of this with a Corsair 750 and I have a one terabyte NVMe stick for storage. Now you can see everything is pretty much a uh, white configuration. We have a white Thermal Take View 71 case, and I kind of wanted a white uh, Stormtrooper themed build, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's get building. All right, to start off with, let's get our motherboard out. And we'll just work right on top of our box. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll put our CPU in. So we're going to be really careful not to bend any of these golden pins that are on here. You also see on this CPU there is a little gold triangle and that is what we want to line up with the triangle on our CPU. Our corner is right here. So what we're going to do is pop this bar up. Gently place this down so we don't bend any of those pins. Give it a little bit of a wobble that'll fall into place and then just put this retaining clip back down. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put RAM in. Um, I did forget to mention this in the beginning of the video, but we are using Trident Z Neo. Uh, this uh, RAM is specifically made for uh, the Ryzen chipset, so that's why I chose it. And we are using uh, two 16 gig sticks. So we are going to take our memory and install it in A2 and B2 for dual channel. You'll hear that click, that means it's seated. Okay, so that's it for RAM. The next thing that we're gonna do is install our NVMe solid state drive. So to install this NVMe stick, we need to take off the heat shield on here. And there are one, two, three Torx or T5 screws that need to come out. Just be careful because we have some RGBs that are on this uh, on this heat shield, so there'll be a little connector right here. So we can just take our NVMe, and we are going to be using the uh, hyper slot for this on the five, uh, Tai Chi 570. We can place it; it only goes one way, right in here at an angle, and then we can just press down. Uh, we also need to take off 
this protective um, film because that is the thermal pad uh, for our heat sink. So we can just place that back on carefully. Okay. And then we can just take our torques and just screw them back in. Okay, so those are nice and put on. Uh, the reason we did it in this order is because um, if we put a, put the heat sink on, uh, that would have just gotten in the way. So uh, CPU, RAM, and then our uh, SSD. So now that we have most of the components done on the board, we can go ahead and put on our CPU cooler. Before we go ahead and put our cooler on, the first thing I want to do is I just want to clean up our uh, CPU um, because we did put some finger oils on there from when we first installed it and I don't want anything on there that could be uh, detrimental to the uh, thermal bridging. So we're just going to take some alcohol and just wipe off any oils that we may have on our CPU. Okay, that looks really good. So for our cooler, we are going to be using uh, the stock cooler for now. Um, if I get into any overclocking, then we can go ahead and change this. But for right now, this is going to be more than enough. So for this cooler, they already have a thermal paste on it. So that is what we are going to use. So for, for our orientation, we are using uh, the levered side on this side of our CPU. So we're just going to take this, get our first side in. Set our second side right down. Okay. Once we have our uh, little tab in, all we need to do is just lock it in position. So we're going to take our uh, fan header and install it right here with our uh, AMD fan LED. So what we can do with our wire is we can just go ahead and tuck it right in between the RAM and the heat sink and that pretty much um, virtually hides that thing um, so you can't even see it at all now we could typically post just like this with our cpu and our ram installed but when we're running the 3900x there's no onboards graphics so we need to put a graphics card in and i didn't know this until my buddy mike told me so shout out to mike so we can go ahead and take our graphics card and you'll notice that this notch right here lines up with our PCIe slot. So we can go ahead and stick that in there. And then I'll snap into place and then that latch will pop up. So now we can go ahead and plug this everything in. We have our eight pin CPU and our 24 pin uh, motherboard uh, power. So we can go ahead and hook everything up and see if we can post. All right, so now we're all plugged in. We have power to our board, CPU, and our graphics card, and we're gonna see if we can post. So we'll just turn our power on on our power supply. So we have lights on our board. We'll go ahead and hit our power button. And our fan and everything is turning on, so that's good. So now we'll just try and pay attention to the screen, see what we got. All right, so that's promising. All right, so. Okay, so we got into our BIOS and we are, um, you can see right here is our board. This is our current BIOS. Um, we are showing our uh, Ryzen 9 3900X um, at running at 3800 megahertz. Uh, we also have our two sticks of 16 gig memory there. Um, you can see what slots they're in, so that's showing good. And then we can go over here and we are showing that we have our NVMe drive uh, installed also. So everything is working. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and um, throw everything into the case finally. 
uh, because we know that everything is working. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to take off these sides. Um, now this is the Thermaltake View 71. Um, I love this case. I love the way it looks. The only problem I have with this case is that these thumb th screws through this glass and the uh, screws on the back for the GPU are totally um, tight. They are horrible. What I actually did is I took a tap and threaded the tap down through these uh, screws, the, the screw holes and up here just to get the screws to go in because when they, I tightened them in it felt like they were going to strip out on me. So. Taking that tap through totally alleviated that, but for as much as you pay for a case like this, I don't think that should be the case. Um, so that's my one complaint with this case so far. Um, just getting into it a little bit and just making sure everything works correctly. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is get this set up for our standoffs for our motherboard to make sure that um, we only have the ones we need so it doesn't uh, touch the back of our motherboard if we do have a standoff in here that we don't need because we don't want to short anything out. The best way to get your motherboard in and in place is to lay your case on the side. That way you can work on it and maneuver it around. If it's sitting upright, it's a little bit more difficult to put in. So lay it over and then you can tighten down all of your screws. With our motherboard in place, the next thing we can do is go ahead and take our power supply and mount that in. Now that our power supply is in, we are going to mount our GPU. So to test it, we had it mounted in our first slot here, but we are going to do a little bit different. We are going to mount it vertically. So we have a tray that comes with the View 71. So we're going to take this tray and mount it right in here. To mount our GPU in the vertical position, we need an extension for our PCIe slot. So I got this off of Amazon. So it's exactly the same way. Uh, we're gonna feed it through here. And we're gonna feed it up to our first slot. This way. And just plug it in. So what we'll do for our card is we will plug that in first, that way it's a lot easier. So that snaps into place. And then we can go ahead and screw our PCIe adapter into our standoffs and that'll hold everything in place. Okay, so this extension uh, strap right here, this is gonna help hold our card into place with the bracket. We also have our screws right up here, so this will be uh, secured in place. So now that we have all of our main components in, what we need to do now is hook up our power supply to our boards and all of our other things and do the tedious task of cable management. Okay guys, it's been about a month in between that very last clip that you just saw and uh, me right here right now. For me, it's only been a couple seconds for you, but I wanted to wait a little bit and be able to put this computer through its paces and kind of see how it performs. Um, the video that is on the screen right now is actually the one you're seeing now. So we're just kind of finishing up this video. Um, I've done a couple on Adobe Premiere Pro and it works flawlessly. It blows my laptop right out of the water. Our rendering time and stuff has been cut down by five to 600% by using this PC. So that is a huge benefit for me as I go through and even like scrubbing through my playbacks, um, everything is just so much smoother and it helps me to edit so much easier for me.
So if you guys are thinking about building your own PC, I definitely recommend it, especially if you're on a laptop and you're moving up and getting a little bit more serious about the things that you're doing in Adobe Premiere. Um, this is definitely the way to go. Now you don't have to go as expensive as I did. Um, you can get a cheaper CPU, um, definitely a cheaper motherboard. Um, tai Chi is kind of the more top end of the middle range. You can definitely get cheaper on that. You get a cheaper graphics card. You can go cheaper just about everywhere that I've done and still have a good performing video editing rig. So I'm glad I bought the things that I did and spent the money I did because um, the way we built this is I didn't want to have any problems with anything slowing down or bogging down and we definitely nailed it. So I definitely encourage you guys to go out there, build your own stuff. It was a lot more simple than I thought, kind of like putting Legos together and then just kind of clicks together. But make sure that you spend the time and make sure all of your components are compatible with each other. That was something that I did spend a lot of time on and just made sure that everything would just work flawlessly together. Because there's nothing worse than buying a part and it's not compatible with your motherboard or your CPU or whatever. So this was a little bit different video. It's a lot more different than most of the things I do. But I just kind of wanted to show that anybody can build these things. It's really simple. And I hope you guys try it also. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Head over to Appalachian DIY for more DIY videos. Thanks again, guys. And I hope to see you next time.